All right, guys, today I want to talk about the employer-sponsored visa, but in particular, the temporary skills shortage 482 visa. This visa allows Australian businesses to sponsor workers who are not Australian citizens or permanent residents to live and work in Australia in an eligible occupation. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tracy Chen. I'm an immigration lawyer based in Australia. We assist applicants to apply for any visas in Australia, employer-sponsored visas, skilled visas, family visas, as well as even tourist and student visas. I have done videos on all sorts of visas and you will be able to find that in my library. But today, let's focus on the employer sponsored. So this is the temporary skilled shortage 482 visa. It's a temporary work visa and allows you to live and work in Australia for up to two or four years and there is usually a pathway to permanent residence. First of all, you have to be sponsored by an eligible sponsor. So your company must apply to become a standard business sponsor. Now this part doesn't really have much to do with the applicant. It's entirely on the company and the Australian business to do this. This is an application they present to the Department of Home Affairs where they provide supporting documents to demonstrate that their business is actively operating in Australia. So you would provide documents such as lease agreements, bank statements, business activity statements, tax returns, financial reports, company registration documents with ASIC. All these documents prove that the company is actively and lawfully operating in Australia. It's a pretty easy process and when you do apply, as long as all your documents and information is correct, it doesn't take long to be approved. Probably two weeks, maybe up to two months maximum, but most of our standard business sponsorship applications are approved within a couple of weeks. Then once that's done, the company will have a standard business sponsorship license, you can call it, which lasts up to five years. So they need to renew this every five years to be able to continue to sponsor their employees. So next, the employer can nominate you in an occupation to be sponsored for the 482 visa. First of all, you have to have an eligible occupation. So you'll need to check the occupation list. There's occupations on the short-term occupation list, medium-term occupation list, and there's even a regional occupation list. You can check out these occupations. I'll leave a link below in the captions. And the next thing you'll need to check once you've identified the occupation is that the occupation actually fits within the scope of the business. So for example, a restaurant can't be sponsoring a carpenter. So it all has to make sense. So that's the purpose of the nomination to check if there is a genuine need for that position within the business. So if a restaurant is sponsoring a chef or a digital marketing agency is sponsoring a marketing specialist, then that would not be a problem. After that is established, the company company needs to pay you at market salary rate. So whatever the market salary is paid for a chef at in a restaurant in Sydney or perhaps a software engineer in a IT company in Melbourne. Also, if there's another Australian who's working in the same position within your company, how much they are paid, all those things are taken into account when you're looking at the market salary of that job. They can't pay you less than the market salary rate of what they'd pay a normal Australian for that job. So it protects migrant workers from being exploited, it's really important. And the minimum salary rate is $70,000 per annum. It cannot be below that. So a minimum salary rate is $70,000, but you also have to consider what the market salary rate is. So for example, a software engineer in Sydney, you can't pay them just $70,000 because the starting rate for those positions is probably $100,000 in Sydney. So once we've established that, then we would go ahead and lodge the nomination application for the employer. You would need to provide provide supporting evidence such as the employment contract, evidence of the market salary rate, and also any other supporting documents to demonstrate the genuine need for the position within the company. Again, this process is pretty straightforward as long as the position is genuine and everything works within that company. These nominations, again, are not taking long these days. I dare to say some are taking less than a day to be approved, but I can't say that for all. So let's say anywhere between one day to 
three months, let's say. It is a lot quicker than it used to be. I think you'll find most of them are getting approved pretty quickly at the moment. So after the nomination is lodged, then you can go ahead and lodge the visa application. Now, this is the part that the employee, the visa applicant really gets involved in. First of all, depending on the occupation, you may need a skills assessment. So there is an instrument for that, which has all the skills assessments on there and any exemptions for that. It depends on the occupation in the passport country. I'll drop the link in the caption below, which gives you all the information you need in regards to that. For the visa application to be eligible, you also need to have the relevant qualifications. You need to have at least two years full-time work experience in that occupation or in a closely related occupation, a skills assessment if it's mandatory, to be eligible to lodge a visa application. Now, in some instances, can use work experience in lieu of the qualification. Now, this will depend on what ANSCO says. So you'll need to check that out and probably get some legal advice around that as well. Now, this work experience, which is required, does not need to be post qualification. So you can be studying software engineering for, you know, your three years while you're getting two years full time work experience. That counts and you would be eligible for the 482 visa in that instance. You also need to meet the English requirements depending on what stream your occupation is on. If it's on the medium term stream or short term stream, the English language proficiency requirements are different for that. Now, there's no age limit for this visa as well. So you can be over 45 years of age to apply for this visa. However, there may be some issues later when you're looking to apply for permanent residency. That is the only thing to keep in mind. Not saying it's impossible though, because there are ways to still get permanent residency if you're over the age of 45. Now, this is quite costly to do this visa. Now, there are professional fees and each firm, you know, charges different professional fees. However, for the government fees alone, for the standard business sponsorship application, it's around $430 for, to you have to pay to the government. And then for the nomination application, it, that will vary depending on the occupation and depending on the size of the company. So for example, if it's a chef and the company you work for turns over more than $10 million and you're being sponsored for over four years, then it's actually $1,800 dollars per year times by the four years you're being sponsored. So it is quite a substantial bit of money. However, the feedback that I've gotten from employers is that it's totally worth it because it costs more to replace them and it helps more towards employee retention, which again, then they won't need to worry about having to replace the employee or recruit more employees because the sponsorship really does keep more people within the business. So I know a lot of people are kind of worried about this, whether their employer will sponsor you. Reach out to them and have a chat to them because you never know a lot of employers are willing to sponsor and we do like hundreds of applications if not thousands so there are plenty of employers out there who are sponsoring people from overseas because there is just a big skill shortage here in Australia. Now I hope that was helpful don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with people who need it. Thank you so much for listening in and I'll see you guys in the next video.